the Minding Your Business podcast. This is episode 60 now. It's always brought to you by Brooks Brothers Consulting. Uh, Brooks Brothers Consulting was started in June of 2013 with my now married brother, Philip. Congratulations to him. Uh, we enjoyed uh, his wedding with his uh, beautiful bride, Jordan Kelly. Uh, and they did a great job, had family come in. Shout out to family from all over on both sides that came in on this past weekend. Shout out to uh, my guy Michael Butler Jr. Uh, did a great job with the photography and the video and, and that sort of thing, man. So they're able to spread that local love, man. But uh, congratulations to my brother, uh, younger brother, and uh, his new bride and uh, the life that they're going to build together. And it's just about the legacy uh, and that sort of thing. But he and I started Brooks Brothers Consulting again back in 2013, and we do uh, banking uh, as well as leadership consultation. Uh, we help with strategic planning, uh, strategizing, uh, identify, plan, and execute, uh, as well as for funding sources, alternative funding sources, when you're looking to acquire assets for your business. So whether that's equipment, whether that is uh, factoring, whether that is real estate, commercial real estate, residential real estate, whatever that happens to be, uh, we're your source for that at brooksbrothersconsulting.com. So you need to call us, 901-808-3801. That's 901-808-3801. And you need to get with us uh, as soon as possible because um, rates are stabilized a little bit, so it's a great time uh, for those that are looking to uh, get a fixed rate on some assets that's going to drive revenue for your company. It's a great time to do that. We don't know how that's going to last going into 2019 uh, with some of the things that are going to be going on to wrap up fourth quarter of this year and going to next year. So um, don't worry about all your Nike apparel and all that kind of stuff. You need to give us a call, 901-808-3801. You can also go to brooksbrothersconsulting.com. We are in episode 60. Uh, Episode 60 is very interesting. The the topic is, why don't you do it? Right? Why don't you do it? So that's what we're going to discuss today on the Minding Your Business podcast. I'm your host, Champ Ron, and let's kick in the music. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Anyway, anyway, thank y'all so much. I'm your host, Champ Ron. This is the Minding Your Business podcast. Coming to you on here in Memphis, it's kind of a cloudy day, but it's still kind of warm uh, here in the city of Memphis. Friday, September the 7th. Hope you had a great uh, Labor Day weekend uh, for those that uh, celebrated that. Maybe you didn't celebrate it, you just enjoyed the day off anyway. It's funny, people fuss and complain about it, but they, they, they sure not going to go to work if they tell them they don't have to come. <laughs> so, but I hope you're having a great day. Listen, today's subject, why don't you do it? 
Yeah, Why Don't You Do It, episode number 60. Thank you to Allison Tibbs on last week. That show, kind of like her, um, our, our mutual friend Shay Brown with Royal Kingdom, that show's done extremely well in terms of downloads. We had Allison Tibbs um, from San Francisco on last week. Thank her. I thank all the guests that have joined uh, the Minding Your Business podcast. I'm coming to you from the hub at uh, High Point Church, East Memphis. Uh, where I'm at. And I'm going to get mobile again. I've kind of settled here uh, a little bit, but I'm going to get back moving again, get back to Slice of Soul. And I want to get back to some other locations as well. The office of Uptown, I've done shows from there. So I want to get back to that. Um, of course, for those listening on the podcast, we've, as always, have our Facebook Live audience. Nia Hughes, what's going on? Thank you for joining. Benny, what's up? Kaylin, what's going on? How you doing? Miss Oliver? And so forth, man. we got several people joining and hopping in. Uh, if you're on Facebook Live, make sure to like and share. Uh, and then hit me with some likes. Hit me with some comments, some questions. But why don't you do it? And I want to talk through. So this week has been loaded down with a ton of subjects. There's a ton of things going on right now. Um, one thing, of course, here locally, for those uh, that care anything about what's going on in Memphis, like I do and many others, um, Kirby High School. All right, so some of y'all are alumni of Kirby High School. You're, you've got that cougar blood uh, in you. Um, Kirby has run into a, a bit of a situation uh, as it relates to uh, pest, and particularly with an infestation of rats and uh, other vermin that have uh, now taken over the school. And so there's been a lot of dialogue and there's been Facebook posts and things like that going all the way around with, as it concerns Kirby High School. I want to get to that probably a little bit more next week. I want, there's some more research and information I'm looking into, but it seems to be a very tough situation. And uh, hopefully some of the people involved can get it resolved for the benefit of students and administration at that school. Um, but there's going to be some, some tough decisions that are going to have to be made any time that a school um, goes through that kind of level of infestation. Uh, you're always going to look at the leadership within that school and then go even beyond that. So um, that's something that was big in kind of more of the local news uh, here in Memphis. But nationally, okay, so everybody got wound up this week with the Nike ad that featured former NFL quarterback, former San Francisco 49ers quarterback, Colin Kaepernick. Um, Colin has been, uh, for the last several years, the uh, poster child or the front runner for um, protesting during the national anthem uh, at NFL games and uh, inspiring that in other players and coaches and things like that. Um, everybody's probably already well-versed and well aware of what's going on as it relates to uh, Colin Kaepernick. Um, he's won several awards uh, as a result of uh, his uh, now you know, growing platform and the decisions that he's made in terms of protesting. Um, people have often missed what he's protesting about, and, and they've tied that to patriotism. Which is extremely, you know, interesting, and in, in how people can take things and kind of twist it. Um, so they're, they're looking at it from a patriotic standpoint that he's disrespecting the American flag and he's disrespecting the military and and all those kind of things. That's what's being said. And so as a result, uh, he's had a lawsuit with the NFL, um, suggesting that the NFL has conspired with owners to keep him out and he hasn't been able to get a job. Even though he's extremely qualified, he's taken a team within a couple plays of the, winning the Super Bowl. Um, he's been a Pro Bowl quarterback, and yet over the last uh, few seasons, he hasn't been able to get a job uh, in the NFL. So it appears that he's been blackballed. It's not that it appears. I'll say it. Yeah, he has been. He has been blackballed out of the NFL. Um, could it be for that reason? I think there's a strong, strong possibility. But anyway, Nike has been working, and albeit from my research, very covertly with the uh, implementation of the ad and working with uh, Colin Kaepernick. 
So it's extremely interesting, you know, kind of uh, development. The ad has come up. It was actually uh, played during uh, opening night of the NFL, which I wasn't really uh, involved in, but uh, or, or from watching as a consumer. But um, they played the commercial, and the commercial featured Colin Kaepernick and Serena Williams and LeBron James and many of the Nike athletes. Also, with those um, athletes that have had or, or have vis- uh, various physical ailments and things like that, it is a, a very nice piece of um, Nike showcasing um, various sports heroes uh, at every level, no matter how popular they are, and how. It is extremely important to recognize that while we, we all may face various obstacles, that you still need to press on and, quote, just do it. OK. And so what I want to talk about today is I'm not on this particular podcast. I'm not looking to get into the back and forth on Twitter and um, people doing different things in terms of whether they support it or they don't support it. That's not really the purpose of that. You can get that on ESPN or uh, any of these other shows that are going to sit there and spend all day debating and kind of whining and and griping and all that kind of thing about their personal feelings with things. Um, For me, I want to take a little bit different approach. I want to talk about it from a, a, a almost purely business standpoint. So think of the business that Nike is in. And I want to stop because uh, Lakeisha Williams here on the Facebook Live had a, something she posted. She says, Dear NFL, it was a very, let's see, it was very nice of you to get your homeboy Nike to, hold on, because people are jump, people are commenting, they're getting all over her comment. Um, it was very nice of you to get your homeboy Nike to do something nice, but we have moved on. So that was Lakeisha, sincerely the blacks. <laughs> All right. So that was Lakeisha posting that. Um, So Lakeisha said, well, you know, blacks have moved on. Um, I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing them still. There's still a lot of conversation about uh, this. So it's been going on for, I think, just a couple of days. So eventually people will move on, of course, because the next shiny object is going to come and divert everybody's attention. But this particular situation is very interesting and one from a business standpoint so think about what kind of business is nike in you know what i mean what kind of business is nike in do you think nike is in the hat and t-shirt and shoes and apparel business you think that's why they they really exist because if that's the case um You may find it interesting to know that that's not really their core business. No matter what they say, they're in the real estate business. The real estate business of what? Property? Things like that? Yeah. They're in the real estate of shelf. They're in the real estate of attention business. So they're, they're, like many companies, they're a real estate company. No different than Walgreens, no different. You know, Walgreens is a real estate company that fronts as a pharmacy and a convenience store. Nike is a real estate company that fronts as a apparel company. But it's about real estate. Shelf space is real estate. If, you, if you're a small business owner and you get your product on Walmart shelves, the amount of real estate they give you is becomes the value because the more real estate they give you, remember location, 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 the more real estate they give you, the more product you can put on that real estate, which creates the opportunity of the more product that you can sell. So it is a real estate company. Lakeisha says the NFL's viewership was down by as much as 17% last season. They are using lateral inclusion to get frustrated minorities to watch. The guy, Lou Garza, says, at the end of the day, business is business in the NFL. Lakeisha Williams says, it's a brand. And I I do agree with that. Um, NFL viewership is down. Um, That's been documented since last season. I'm not sure how it was for kind of the opening night. I imagine it probably was still down. Um, Because people are voicing their frustration on a number of different fronts, whether it's with the Nike ad and um, their support of Colin Kaepernick versus their lack of support for Colin Kaepernick. And there's been people that have been uh, 
at least quoted or stated that they're burning Nike apparel, which Nike says, go ahead. As long as people see the swoosh and the, and the Nike, um, that gives them good publicity, even if you are burning old gear. Because what the hell does Nike care about your old Jordans that you bought in 1999 that you still was probably wearing anyway? Lou Garza says, any publicity is good publicity. They've gotten more people to say the word Nike this past week. Lou hits it on the head. That's what it was. The hashtags, the attention. You know, Nike's, they're, you know, they're not hiring a bunch of dummies, right? They've got people that have already assessed and pre-assessed what the um, overall platform was going to do. They knew that they were going to, you know, upset some folks. They also knew that there were going to be some people that were at least temporarily maybe even over the long term, where either not going to watch NFL football, not support their team, or not support Nike apparel and go to another company. They also know that they're going to gain a whole bunch of new customers. So you're always measuring in business the the cost-benefit analysis, and you're always looking at what you're going to gain versus what you're going to lose. That's always a business. You're not going to satisfy everybody. Which brings me to a point from a business standpoint. What Nike is showcasing with this ad, in my opinion, is is not just about, again, selling apparel and things like that. This is about positioning, right? Other companies, whether it's, uh, what's the one that Steph Curry's with, uh, Under Armour and Reebok and all these other companies um, have come into play now. And, you know, they're vying for market share, Right. And so Nike, even though it's a large player, they still have to position themselves, which is the best practice I share with any business. You, even if you acquire market share and you've got a household name, you still have to advertise. You still have to market. You still have to brand, as Lakeisha said. It's still branding. You have to do that. What Nike's positioning themselves is for the future. Again, they're a real estate company. What's real estate? Property, real property. Shelf space. And attention. What's happening in the world today is there. You, there's a lot of jousting, you know, minding your business nation of uh, attention because there's so many people in business. There's so many messages going around. Yeah, social media has expanded everybody's reach and allowed them to cast a, a, a bit of a wider net. So what that's doing is there's a competition all the time for attention. The real estate of attention. And I'll, I'll have that on a subsequent show. There's going to be a show around the real estate of attention as it relates to business. But that's what they're doing. Well, so whose attention are they trying to get? They're not really looking for more attention from baby boomers. Even Gen X. They already have what they're going to get out of those generations for the most part. Those generations are heavily in the workforce. They're in leadership. But they're either going to have them or they're not. What they're looking at is the younger portion of the millennials, so those millennials that are, say, under 30, and Generation Z that is turning, in some cases, around 18 now and entering college or entering the workforce. Okay? So that's what's happening now. That's what's happening now, and that's the attention they're trying to get. Generation Z, if you begin studying them, and these are the folks, just to define that, there's a lot of different de- you know, definitions on generations, but Generation Z are the folks, like my kid's age, that are seven and eight, five years old at that younger age, all the way down to folks that were born, you know, 99 and 2000, at, at the turn of the, the century, into the 21st century. Those folks, believe it or not, are now as old as 18. So now they're getting to where they're making decisions. you you got to capture that generation. They're not like boomers or great generation folks. They're more racially diverse than any other uh, you know, demographic of people. Their expectations are different of what they expect from brands. One of the marketing um, philosophies that you know came out of you know the 20th century was play it safe right don't take a side you know everything was you know you got to keep your business neutral so you don't agree you don't disagree you just take the political kind of um, position towards you know you know we're not taking any side 
here's here's where we are. We're right smack dab in the middle. Okay? That's that notion is starting to change here in the twenty first century because companies are figuring out that even playing it safe is extremely dangerous. And I'll tell you that in your business. Playing it safe is extremely dangerous. I'm not saying being reckless in your business and as you make business decisions, but playing it safe is dangerous. It's dangerous personally, you gotta take some risk. I told you my brother got married this past weekend. All right? Uniting with people is a risk. Okay? It's a risk. Whether it's in business, whether it's personally, whatever it is, it's a risk on everybody's side. But you gotta take the risk. And that's what Nike's doing. They they're taking a fairly calculated risk. They know they're gonna upset some folks. Okay? They already knew that. But it's about real estate. That's what it's about. And you've got to understand that in your business, whether you've got shelf space, whether you're looking for ear space, eye space with the consumer, everything's becoming that much more saturated. The Internet is going to be like here locally in Memphis. It's going to be like Poplar Avenue and Winchester Road where you've got advertising up and down the street that if you watch every sign going down Poplar, it'll make your eyes cross because there's so much advertising, so many different businesses. That's what's happening online. And so you've got to differentiate yourself. Playing it safe right now can be dangerous because you, what you don't want to do is just fit in with every, what everybody else is doing. And so Nike's taken, and they've been working with Colin. And again, you know, the, the report is, is that this was so convert, or covert within Nike that very few people outside of some of the senior executives even knew about this ad. So this wasn't something that was traveling apparently through all their marketing team and and that sort of thing. Um, And so Lou says here on Facebook Live, my personal opinion, it's a bad idea for a commerce business to publicly acknowledge where they stand politically. Everyone is a consumer. Yep, there you go. Lou, Lou, that is the 20th, 20th century approach, you know, my brother. And so, yes, it's a bad idea. It traditionally has been a bad idea. Blue is right. In the past, in, in the PAST, in the past, yes, it is a bad idea. Um, and it was an initial shock to Nike because the stock price dropped slightly because some investors who are mostly who? Baby boomers and great generation people right now who are heavy in the Wall Street. They were concerned about the very point that Lou uh, just made. Thank you, Lou, for, for that, uh, that point. Because there's truth to that. There, it was a bad idea. However, in today's society, when you're going after new market share, because you know Nike has is, is been fairly saturated, but there are new players that have come into the game. Like I mentioned a few of them earlier. So new players have entered some of the apparel real estate game as it relates to that. And so... How are you capturing the generation that does care about where the company stands? Not, and it's not political. And so it's not a political stand that they're making. The people that are protesting it have made it a political stand. It's not a political stand. No different than Colin Kaepernick was not making a political uh, protest. He's making a protest towards police brutality. Police brutality. That's what he was kneeling for. He was not kneeling to disrespect the, the American flag. Although it can be argued that the timing of when he was doing his protest suggests that. But that was not his intent. At least that's not how it's been documented as his intent. And so his intent was not to disrespect the military. Tim Tebow kneeled and it wasn't, you know, people understood what he was kneeling for. When Tim Tebow did it. And people were still upset, you know, people that, you know, aren't um, quite as religious and things like that or don't believe in that public religious uh, demonstration had some issues with that. But they never took it as him disrespecting a flag or disrespecting um, the military or or police or suggesting that all police are bad or, or all of anything. Lakeisha Williams said, but then campaign funding wasn't public knowledge. They took sides but kept ads neutral. Um, I'm not sure which, if you're referring to the Nike ad, um, and then Lakeisha says, well, campaign funding wasn't knowledge. 
public knowledge. I'm not sure what you're relating to there, Lakeisha, so if you could provide a little bit more insight on what you're saying there, um, I'd be interested in, in that piece. Uh, Lou came back. Let's see. We've become a society of it's us against them. Now we are laboring consumer goods the same way. Um, I I think there could be some truth to that, too, Lou. I think that one of the things that's happened in this society and and relating this back to today's subject is we've become kind of uber sensitive to anybody that does not um, agree with us. So when people disagree with us, we label them as an enemy. We don't know. We, we've kind of forgotten um, how to have kind of civil discussions without it being real polar, polarized or becoming political. And we, so we tie it to our political beliefs instead of looking at and understanding where someone's coming from. So we don't listen as well as we used to. <laughs> what we do is we listen to see where we can disagree and then we become, we, we then create sides. This particular ad just featured Colin Kaepernick. It didn't feature anything around, it, it didn't even show him protesting or doing anything. What it featured, just the fact that it featured him rubbed people the wrong way. Which is interesting because that particular ad, there, it's difficult to say that you would disagree with an ad that features athletes with physical disabilities as well as athletes that are well respected within their craft and how all of them are united in the sense of the, the type of um, work ethic, the type of commitment that it takes and that no matter what your um, situation is, you can be successful and you can achieve. I just don't see how people disagree with that or how that becomes political. What happens is, is people take the, the side of Colin Kaepernick of what he was doing during anth- national anthems being sung, and they're applying that to um, political areas or patriotism. Which you know, I would say even to you know, there was the meme that came out that was interesting um, on social media where you know, if you cared that much about patriotism, where are you with the veterans? You're going to burn Nike apparel. Right, some cases brand new apparel that some of the homeless veterans that you you know claim to care about so much. Where are you with those, and what have you done? So you know the challenge always is to people personally. What have you done? You know now certainly for people who have served in the military, much respect to them and appreciate their service uh, to this country. Um, but when you you take that and, and you politicize it. You know, you're, you're, you're dampening it. You're, you're taking even if, if you're your own service and you're reducing it to um, your political back and forth that just creates division. So Lakeisha Williams says in the past, 20 years ago, when advertising was more innocuous. Y- yes, and that's true. And that's more my point, uh, Lakeisha. When it comes to the Nike ad, it's going to be much more overt because the in today's time when you're acquiring a new customer and you and you're trying to solidify a new customer base this generation of consumer expects different from, than in the past in the past the baby boomer was okay with the 99 cent cheeseburger from McDonald's or the 89 cent cheeseburger of course you are when you've got seven kids and you're living in some rural place you know what i mean today's consumer has no kids right or one and they are, they want to know what's behind the curtain. More information's out there. So I'll pay four ninety nine to get a real cheeseburger versus $0.99 cents to get the cheeseburger surprise. So that worked in the past, in the 70s and the 80s and things like that. That type of advertising you worked, you'll keep neutral. It's kind of the difference between even LeBron James and Michael Jordan. You know, right now, Michael Jordan's a, a Nike athlete through his Jordan brand. Has he been quoted as saying anything? Has Michael Jordan ever been quoted as saying anything? No, he's, he's kept the neutral thing. He's a guy that was born in the 60s. So he came up, he's a baby boomer. He came up during the marketing platform of stay neutral, don't ruffle any feathers, you've got corporate sponsorship, they're not going to like that, we've got to keep right down the middle. So he's not going to speak out one way or the other, 
LeBron James, born in 1984, 85, whenever it was, 86, somewhere in their mid-80s, he grew up and he's a millennial, right? He's on the latter end of the millennial, but he's a millennial nonetheless. And so he came up in more of this era. Um, He didn't necessarily grow up with social media, but he picked up social media early on. And he demands, just like his generation, has a bigger demand for transparency and that your uh, organization, your company has a soul and believes in something aside from just capitalism and making money. That's the difference in the past. And that's not to create divisiveness. That's just a difference of methodology. It's a difference of viewing the world. It doesn't mean in the past is bad or it doesn't mean that today is good or vice versa. All this means, nation, is that as people evolve and demographics and um, generations evolve, they have different expectations, right? Depending on how they were reared, how they grew up. So Michael Jordan, was, he, he got his start professionally in the 80s. That's when these companies that nobody wanted to take a side with anything. Nobody did. And the companies that aren't realizing that, they're not willing to take a side. They're either just going to coast. Because just think, you know, the, between the millennial and Generation Z, that's going to pretty soon be the largest demographic in this country. It's going to be the largest one. The largest generation in this country is going to be millennials and um, Generation Z folks. If you're not preparing your business to be appealing and understand, that's when you become the old fogey. That's where, what happens with that is that's where the 80s kid grows up to become the old fogey in 2020. (laughs) The same way you were making fun of the older generation when you were young, now you become that old, you know, generation that's going to stick in their ways and, you know, not be creative and not be innovative. So it's funny how people can become what they admonished and what they made fun of in the past, they grow up to just become the same thing. That's one of the worst things in life. It's just like the little boy that vows to, to, I'm not going to be like my daddy and become an alcoholic, or I'm not going to be like my mama and be this and that, only to grow up and become that. So the worst thing in the world. It's the absolute worst. Let me shout out some more people, man. Terrell Key, what's going on? Facebook Live. Dominic Lawson. Make sure, man, I'm looking forward to Dominic. Man, you've been gone too long with the Startup Life podcast, brother. Um, so we need to see you. I know he's got new episodes on the horizon. So that's our big brother in, in podcasting. Uh, Dominic Lawson with Owls LLC and the Startup Life podcast. Make sure you check that out. He's going to have a new episode coming up. Make sure that you subscribe to his podcast so you can get notification uh, on that new episode. Josh Midget, what's going on, brother? How you doing? Great show this morning on you talking about some things, man. And Terrell Key, man, is great, brother, doing some things, man. Make sure if you need to get your windows tinted, you happen to be in Memphis, you need to make sure you inbox Terrell Key because uh, he's taking care of it, man. He's got the key to the city. Um, him and, and his great wife, man, are doing things, man, for a long time. And so, man, definitely check out with him. Uh, Lakeisha Williams says, I remember athletes being mute. Damn right they were, Lakeisha. <laughs> they weren't saying anything. So if you think back, now I grew up, I was born in 1981, okay? And I remember when I first started watching sports and the NBA, you know, those guys were Michael Jordan. I came at the tail end of guys like Dr. J and all them retiring, and you had this changing of the guard with Michael, and, you know, Magic was kind of towards his end, and Larry Bird, and then I really hit my stride with Shaq and Penny and um, those guys coming in the 90s, Gary Payton, you know, all these guys that came up kind of in the late 80s and into the 90s, Isaiah Thomas. And so those guys were very, you know, they're not very outspoken at all. I mean, I remember when Dennis Rodman was turning heads when he was saying stuff. And that was just like destroying people. And Charles Barkley and those guys that were a little bit more outspoken. um, They were, you know, kind of the more outspoken ones saying things. But even then, they were not speaking out against social injustice. You know, Charles Barkley took it on the chin just saying he wasn't a, um, a role model. Oh, he said he was he wasn't a role model, that a parent should be a role model. And that blew up folks. 
Philip Ashley Ricks was going on. That's who else? You need to go on Cooper Street. You need to check out Philip Ashley Ricks chocolates, by the way. I'm showing love to everybody. So that's how we do on the Minding Your Business podcast. When they hop on, these are folks that are on the Facebook Live connected to. And um, make sure that he's got those turtles there, too. I need to get by and get some of those turtles, too, Philip, man. So don't, don't sell them all to Brian Harris and all that kind of thing, man. I know they they eating them all up. <laughs> uh, but I need to get by there. And you do, too. You need to get by there and check out Philip Ashley Ricks there, Midtown Memphis over on uh, on Cooper. And uh, those of you that are on Facebook Live, if you've got a business, uh, you've got a show, you've got an event coming up, make sure you post it in the comments so that everybody can know what they got going on and how they can support you. And in turn, in reciprocity, that you're supporting other people as well. So those are two-way streets. Um, but Lakeisha's right. Uh, thank you, Lakeisha, for your, your thoughts and, and my guy Lou um, and all of you that are sharing on Facebook Live. But, yeah, athletes in the past were mute. They were coached to be mute. All right. They were reared that way. Don't again. Think of baby boomers. They were kids doing during civil rights. They watched all these folks get killed. Some of them by the government. <laughs> Some of them set up by the folks that look like them. All right. So they came up poor like a lot of us do. But they came up poor. So they, they came, once they got a chance to achieve and, you know, these corporations and stuff, they, they didn't want that kind of smoke. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, yes, they played it safe. Now, playing it safe is extremely dangerous. You're in the real estate game. Everybody that I just shouted out, Philip Ashley and uh, Elliot, the main sales, they're in real estate. They're, they're competing for the real estate of eyes, ears, likes, shares, attention in a crowded marketplace. And they work hard. Angel Johnson in, in her and working with young ladies, right, in their appearance. These folks, Dominic Lawson, like I say, Terrell, you know, I mean, go around, Cleo Hayes, you know, Coach Cleo's on here, uh, Lamar Hicks. I mean, these folks are, they're in business for a reason. And they're, they're competing in a much more global marketplace that there's much more eyes and ears and attention. That doesn't mean that the strategy of taking the side works for everybody. Again, Nike had to do, they had probably had to spend millions to do primary data research to figure out, you know, where this is all going to settle. They didn't just up one day and get out of bed and say, you know what, call up Colin <laughs> and let's see if we can get a nag going and see who we can piss off. That's not why they, that's not why they do that. They do that, you know, it was a calculated business move to increase real estate and to get attention with a younger demographic and a more widespread global demographic. That's what it's about. Yep, that's what it's about. El Mac, what's going on? Shakita Brown, how you doing? What's going on? Thank y'all for joining on, man. But that's what it's about. It's about real estate. And so playing it safe is dangerous, y'all. And so in your business, um, you've got to weigh that. Now, again, that doesn't... Oh, I'll use uh, Philip as an example. Philip Ashley uh, Chocolates. Um it may not be to his benefit to take a personal side on an issue. It may be, right? That's for him to decide that he'd have to do uh, the, the market data research, which I'm sure he would do, to figure out what the impact is to his retail business that is real estate. Chocolate's on the shelf. Authentic chocolate. Chocolate is gifts. And the, the expansion of his model and what that looks like over time. For Nike, there, is, there was a huge upside. There was risk. They had to take the risk. All right? They had to take the risk. Then the risk is, yes, you may alienate like they may have, at least in a short period of time, they may have alienated some of their uh, existing market. And you know in this country what happens. People get all pissy and pissed off, and then as soon as something else happens, that's the shiny, again, the shiny object, they jump on that, and then they jump right back on Nike. So this time next year, everybody that burned their Nike gear will run back to the Nike store and buy it all back again, possibly. And maybe they don't. Who knows? But they had to take the risk. Lakeisha's back. She says, media is everywhere. Nike ads or any ad campaign are like missionaries of media, spreading the gospel of advertising. 
Yeah, that's an interesting analogy, uh, Lakeisha, but thank you for that one. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, again, media is everywhere, so it goes back to my point of real estate, the real estate of attention. And you're always competing against that in your business. And that's what's different today than talking about in the past. In the 80s, you know what you had to do to promote an event? You had to rent a place. You had to go to some uh, printing company. You couldn't just share your flyer and create it digitally on the computer and just share it with everybody, with millions of people. You know what you had to do to promote an event? You had to print off your flyer, and you had to go put it in the newspaper. You had to try to get on TV, and you had to put a lot of footwork into it. Now you can sit from your couch and send it to a million people. From your couch. From here, sitting in a coffee house. Sitting from a coffee house right now, I'm broadcasting to thousands of people from a phone, a laptop, another phone that's recording, and a microphone. That's it. So the, the world has changed just that much. Scott Kenny says, unfortunately, there is profit to be had in divisiveness, politically and commercially. I agree that we as a society need to get back to more conversation. We all, let's see, where did I miss? We all have a right to our opinion. I dedicated most of my adult life to protecting that right. And whether we agree or not, we all can learn from others' point of view. Imagine what we could accomplish if we were to simply have more respectful interchange of ideas. All right. Amen to that, Scott. Um, It's what I spoke to earlier. The world has become so... It it, it uses um, areas that people hold dear to their heart that are very um, charged. And people use that to divide themselves and, and segment themselves from other people. So if we don't agree, then we're mortal enemies <laughs> because we don't agree on a point. And that's what's different than in the past. In the past, you know, it, it seemed like people were able to agree to disagree, but it didn't mean that you were a a-hole because <laughs> you don't agree with me or I can't sit in the same room with you or we can't live in the same neighborhood or we can't attend the same functions or to go to the same uh, religious ceremony, whatever it is. Um, so he's right. The respectful interchange of ideas is needed. And that's what we've got to foster. We can, we can disagree. We should disagree at times. We shouldn't agree on everything. But as a society, we, we've gotten so, we use everything to divide. You get on Twitter, people wake up now pissed off. Like, how do you do that? How, like how do you wake? How do you go to bed pissed off because you're sitting there reading the timeline, and then you wake up in the morning before you even get up and get, use the bathroom, you've almost pissed on yourself because you're so mad about what somebody said on the timeline from last night that you don't even know. Now come on now, how ridiculous is that? My guy Rod Selman back here, man. Uh, you're Rod in the financial business. You need to get with him too uh, with your insurance business. So make sure you inbox uh, Roderick Selman. He didn't know I was plugging him in, man. He back there tripping off me uh, here at the hub, man. But you need to make sure you're doing business with folks that you, that you see in and comment and like in every day. That you, you can reach out and touch. And uh, Rod's a guy that I've worked with, man, and trust him. So you need to get with him, uh, with Rod Selman. Do that today, too, by the way. Uh, i like for 10 of y'all to inbox him today with business now, not with foolishness. Um, but... It's the thing. It's about being respectful. You know, and how can you be that pissed? You know, I just don't understand that. You'll go through Facebook or, and, you know, you'll go through uh, Twitter and people will just be so upset. You be thinking they're going to have an aneurysm, just, you know, scrolling through their timeline, worrying about a bunch of people that they don't know and if they looking for who they cannot agree with. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they go seeking that. They go seek to see, you know, who on my timeline don't agree with what I agree with. They do that on Facebook. They're looking for, they get tagged in the stuff. They're looking for who can they not agree with that they can get on and try to give a different opinion. And I haven't seen one person on social media stop and say, you know what? You're right. I'm a complete ass. I was completely wrong. You're completely right. I just can't. Nobody's doing that. You're not changing the, a grown person's opinion on stuff. People have really deep-rooted kind of things. But it doesn't mean we have to be divisive. It doesn't mean we have to be you know, ornery towards each other or disrespectful or any of that. We can just not agree. 
What's wrong with that? Terry Rogers, you need to get with Shoemaker Financial. Mr. Terry D. Rogers at the way. Terrell Key says they're pissed off at being pissed off. Yeah. They just sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so they jump on a timeline. They can't even have to go to sleep. Some of these folks that in their grind work, they stay up all night watching timelines till they fall asleep. Some of these folks probably fall asleep with the phone sitting on their stomach. <laughs> you know what I mean? As soon as they wake up, they can't address their family. They, they don't do anything. They, they're not thankful for anything. First thing they do, pick up the phone, look at the timeline, and see what's happened for the day and, and who's going to piss them off. And who do they not disagree with? And then look at, well, what race are they? How old are they? Where they live? Where are they from? Where do they attend this? Where do they attend that? And making judgments of each other because of that. We've got to stop that. We can have civil conversation, agree to, to disagree, but listen for a point of view and understand where people are coming from. It doesn't have to be malicious, y'all. Just understand and take the chance to listen and see where someone's perspective is coming from. And then look into the facts of it. What's the fact data of it? Not the emotion of it and all that. What's the fact data? Emily, what's going on? How you doing? D. Young, how you doing? But I want to I take time now. I've kind of talked through that a good bit. But I want to use this to encourage through that in taking the Nike ad. Because what you saw in the Nike ad was athletes. It started out with an athlete, you know, that... You know, they have phys- you know, physical ailments. They may be lacking limbs or they may be lacking certain cognitive functions. But they're still able to participate in sports that they love and be successful. So my question is, why don't you do it? Why don't you do it? Nike says their slogan for years has been just do it. So why don't you do it? Why don't you be successful no matter what you're facing? We face obstacles. There are people in career transition right now. There are people who are facing foreclosure, people who have been through foreclosure, people who have lost jobs, people who are just now gaining jobs after a long time, people whose business is just now taking off after years of setbacks. People are still trying to figure out what they're trying to do. Why don't you just do it? People who are looking for support from you. Why don't you just do it? People who are looking to connect with you outside of the divisiveness that Scott Kenny talked about. Why don't you do it? So I'm encouraging you as you're listening to this podcast or you're watching on Facebook Live. Look at your, your, your way of viewing the world. How are you instilling positivity? Like I just talked about, people are getting on Twitter and on social media looking for ways to, to be about stuff and you know, be upset and be pissy and who do they agree with about every single little topic. But why don't you do it? Why don't you look to be positive? I'm not saying be naive. I'm not saying being dumb. I'm saying be positive. Be loving. Nobody wants to be around anybody that's whining and griping and always looking. Nobody wants to be around that person. If they are, they won't be around them long. Some people are just waiting to set up. They, they, they can't wait to get away from these negative people. And negative people don't like to be around negative people. Just like the thief don't like the robber. And the robber don't like the thief. It's funny. People that, you know, they like to be negative, but they always want positive for them. Terry Rogers says, no social media topic has ever taken me to a place where I wanted to cut them completely off, unfriend, block, or hate them. I may disagree, and sometimes with passion, but I can still love the person, shake their hand afterwards, or even offer them out to lunch. There you go. Brittany Thornton, what's going on? How you doing, girl? Glad you could join as well. Terry makes a great point in terms of we can disagree. That doesn't mean we have to be mortal enemies. You don't have to turn into Thanos and snap in your finger the end all of society every time someone disagrees with you. Some of y'all are just like Thanos. Y'all, y'all looking to you know, put these jewels on your hand. 
and y'all want to snap your finger and, and end every, anybody who don't agree with you. No, we, we're bigger than that. We, we've evolved more than that as a society. There's nothing wrong with disagreeing, like Terry's saying. I'm the same way. I don't unfriend and block people because they disagree with me. I don't have all the answers. Neither do you. I don't know everything. I won't ever know any, everything. But I can learn. And I can learn different perspectives as I have over time. That's part of grooming your intelligence. If you're just going to be dogmatic and just sit around and you know, you know, you know just want to be pissed off all the time, then you've you got to go on somewhere. But it's, it's kind of time out for that. So don't use the ads or Colin Kaepernick or his ways just to be divisive. Don't perpetuate that. When we say that it creates divisiveness, we don't have to perpetuate it. Have the dialogue. Me and another man, me and another one, we can disagree all day long. But we're on the same team. One of the things, you know, I've had this conversation with people as um, just an analogy. You notice in the movies that always feature the destruction of the world, right? Whether it's Independence Day or whatever. Take Independence Day as an example, right? What happened in Independence Day? The movie with Will Smith and uh, all those folks in it. What happened? You got separate, just like in normal society, you got separate bickering. This nation don't like this nation and, you know, there's threats of war and everything. But what happens when something comes out the sky to threaten all of humanity all of a sudden the Russians can work with the Chinese the Australians get involved folks from South America from Europe and, I mean hell Antarctica when something threatens all of humanity why do people come together because there's a threat to existence when there's a threat to existence Notice everything gets put on the back burner. All their beasts are now worried about who's going to have the power or the control and things like that. Now it's about just existing because now something has come out of the sky that threatens our existence. Notice in Independence Day, the aliens didn't come down just for, to America. They didn't come down just to Africa. They didn't drop down just on Newfoundland. Japan they came to kill everybody so what happened people bound together what happens in sports and this is where Nike's in that real estate game of sports what happens in sports the one thing in sports I've had teammates and coach Cleo can tell you and everybody that's played sports Ojinga Carr just joined Epiphany Consulting you need to get with him today host great events that will help you through your business. Take the time with you. So you need to get with Ojinga. Ojinga called with Epiphany Consulting. But Coach Cleo will tell you, anybody that's played any kind of sports or anything like that will tell you. I've had teammates from every walk of life, y'all. Every walk of life. Heterosexual. Homosexual. Hate the military. Love the military. Hate politics. Love politics. Short, tall, fat, skinny. Very well able, disabled. Various challenges, experienced things, lost their mother, lost their father. Gained siblings, all kinds of different things. All kinds of different things, man. But the, the deal is this. S the sports... And we had a common goal that united us. Whether it's basketball, whether it's football, whatever it is, there's a common goal that unites us. What is that common goal? To perform well and to achieve victory against whatever opponent that we're facing. I started basketball games with four other white guys. I started basketball games with people from different demographics, Asian. Filipino, all black. And when there's five guys on that basketball floor, we have one common goal. At least we should, and typically we do. 
If anything, we want to win. Now, some pe- people want to, you know, have certain stats. Some people just want to be seen. But generally, when you step on that court, we have a common goal. Our beliefs are irrelevant. How I feel about the president, how I feel about um, social issues are irrelevant because we have a common goal. That's what we've got to get to. I guess I'll need to pass the collection plate here uh, as I'm getting into my sermon. (laughs) Carla Hills, what's going on? Shavonda, how you doing? Ojinga, no problem, man. I definitely like to show the love. But that's what it's about, y'all. So I encourage you, um, as I'm closing out the podcast, wherever you're listening, whatever point that you're listening, you're going to make it. And listen, I'm not the guy. I'm not just, you know, this is not to pacify anybody. This is not to be naive. Yes, there are challenges out there. That's no doubt about it. But you survived challenges before. So why don't you do it? Why don't you do it now? You survived challenges before. Some of y'all faced all kinds of different things. People have done horrible things to you, through you. They've talked about you. They've drug your name through the mud. They've left you hanging. They've disappointed you. You've disappointed some folks. Uh Huh? (laughs) You're not always the victim. Some of y'all have done some folks dirty before. I certainly have. No, you, you let Facebook tell it everybody's the victim. Some of y'all have done folks low down before too. You haven't been there. You haven't been supportive. You've done unscrupulous things to people. You've talked about people. But why don't you do it? So I encourage you, be positive. But keep working. In sales, you're going to hear no's. Everything's about sales. You're going to hear no before you hear yes. You know, when I've been in sales, no's excited me. Champion, how's that? I hate hearing no. I don't like to be, you know, put down. I don't want to be rejected. Because I knew, typically, when I was selling bank products, right, I would have to hear no roughly about eight times before I heard a yes. So guess what a no meant to me? Not now. Or I don't have enough information Or I'm closer to my eight no's to get my yes So every no was exciting Because oh, if I got no Seven more and I'm going to get a yes I get another no, okay Nothing but six more Another no, number five more Until I get to that seventh no That eighth no I'm really excited by that eighth no Because I know, man, the next one's going to be that yes But I've got to stay in the game long enough So just stay in the game. I know it's hard. It's hard when people walk away from you. Everybody stays around when they feel they can use you for something or you can add a value. When you no longer add a value in their mind or in their perception, they'll cast you away. It's just like the Joker told Batman in the Dark Knight. Yeah, they tolerate you now, but they see you the same way they see me, Doc. And when they don't need you anymore... They go cast you away. And what did they do in the Batman movie? When they thought he killed them people and stuff, they ain't investigated. They put the mark on his back. No matter how many people he had done saved. That's the same thing the Joker's telling them in the Dark Knight. That happens. That's real. But you got to keep moving. Your kids aren't going to be uh, please you all the time, but you got to keep moving. You didn't please everybody all the time when you were a kid. Just because everybody's too old to tell it. It's like the old ladies in the church that, you know, act all holier than now. It's just that everybody that remembers that when you were a whore is in the home or dead. Right? Huh? Everybody that remembers that is gone. So don't get too high and mighty. Listen, we, we all have, have come short, but why don't you do it? Why don't you... Try to be positive. Try not to be so divisive. And see what what happens with your life. So I hope this is helping somebody today. Be encouraged. Uh, if I can be a resource, make sure you get with me. Um, 
But we're just going to enjoy this weekend, and we're going to go into next week with a new frame of mind. Don't look for social media. Don't look for people to just agree with or just disagree with. Listen to the perspectives. Listen to where people ask the questions. And if you agree to disagree, then we just disagree. Doesn't mean, like Terry said, we can still have lunch together. We can still break bread together. We can still be brothers and sisters. No, don't let nobody do you any kind of way. Address what you need to address. I'm not saying be naive and dumb. But be open to seeing things in a different light. Be open to you know someone else's perspective because they, they've walked a different mile than you have. That's what this thing is about. Listen, I'm your host, Champ Ron. This is the Minding Your Business podcast. Um, we come, try to come to you with new episodes every Friday. Man, I love for you guys. If you're interested in uh, promoting on the show, I promote some folks on here. Just let me know. Um, we've got different packages for you to be able to do that. Listen, I'm looking to build the Binge Podcast Network. Uh, for those on social media, you've heard some about that. I'm looking to build that. So I'm looking for podcasters that want to share their content. We're not looking at putting no handcuffs on nobody. We want you to be free, but we want to unite, not be divisive. We want to unite and be able to promote our content. So I'm looking for content creators. I'm looking for podcasters. If you've had a podcast for some time, if you're fairly new to podcast, I want to talk to you. So email me, Ron, R-O-N, at the, T-H-E, M-Y-B podcast.com. So Ron at the M-Y-B podcast.com. Listen, man, y'all have a great day. Jamika Phillips, what's going on, Sororo lady? How you doing? Thanks so much, Coach Cleo. Uh, real quick, Scott says, finding successful people to help you along the way is huge. Truly successful people are glad to share what got them there. Exactly right. We're going to end on that note. Scott Kenny, thank you so much, man. Appreciate y'all's positivity. Um, and we're going to see you next time. This is the Mind of Your Business podcast. Champ Ron. <laughs>